القدوة الثانية عالم نفس وطبيب أمريكي من أصل نيوزلندي إنه عالم النفس وعالم الجنس جون ماني رجاء اعرضوا لنا صورة جون ماني هذه الصورة الأولى من صوره أيام شبابه الصورة الثانية إنها الكهولة والشيخوخة الصورة الثالثة لجون ماني هذا هو جون ماني في أواخر أيامه لقد توفي سنة 2006 ميلادي سيمون دي بوفوا تمثل الجانب النظرية الفلسفية تمثل الجانب العاطفية في الثقافة الجندرية وقد لاحظتم على القبر المشترك لها ولسارتر كيف أن الذين يسيرون على دينها وعلى فلسفتها يطبعون شفاههم على القبر وعلى شاهد القبر إعلانا لحبهم فسيمون قدوة في الجانب النظري في الجانب الفلسفي وفي الجانب العاطفي والجنسي هذه هي سيمون أما جون ماني يمثل الجانب العلمي والعملية في الوقت نفسه جون ماني إنه إيقونة الثقافة الجندرية سنة 1955 ميلادي كان يصر على نظريته الجندرية الكلام هو هو الذي تحدثت به سيمون في المقابلة التي كانت سنة 1975 وعرضت عليكم مقطعا منها من أن الأطفال حين يولدون أكانوا ذكورا أم كانوا إناثا هؤلاء لا هم ذكور ولا هم إناث وإنما التربية والوقائع القادمة هي التي ستمنحهم الهوية الجندرية جون ماني كان يصر على هذا وبسببه بسببه بسببه ثبتت هذه النظرية عند كثيرين وتبنتها مؤسسات كثيرة إلى الحد الذي وصلنا أن صار هذا الأمر جزءا من الشرعة الدولية مع أن جون ماني لا يملك تجربة علمية ناجحة 
تجربة واحدة وكانت فاشلة وكانت كارثة بتمام معنى الكلمة عائلة كندية تتألف من زوج شاب وزوجته الشابة في العشرين من العمر رزق بطفلين توأمين ولدين بروس وبراين هكذا سمى الوالد والوالدة التوأمين بروس وبراين التوأمان عندهما مشكلة كان يعانيان من حالة تسمى الشبم المراد من الشبم حالة جسدية تتمثل في ضيق فتحة القلفة والقلفة قطعة الجلد التي تغطي الإحليل تغطي قضيب الطفل فكان التوأمان يعانيان عند التبول لا يخرج بولهما بسهولة لأن الفتحة في القلفة وهي القطعة التي عادة تقطع من الجلد عند الختان الأطباء نصحوا الأبوين بأن يقوما بختان الطفلين الحكاية مفصلة لا أريد أن أكمل الحكاية لكنني سأترككم مع هذا الفيديو. He had his theory, uh, and he didn't have any way of proving it because, I mean, how do you prove something like that? <laughs> you, you, until, uh, un, until this family showed up at his doorstep, um, and it was a uh, family, a Canadian family from Winnipeg, I think, right? Um, I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And they were the, the Reamer family, a blue collar, very young couple, 20, 21 years old. Um, and they had a horrific tragedy in their family, which is that they gave birth to twin boys. The boys were fine. And when the boys were, well, actually they had phimosis. Phimosis is a um, abnormality of the um, opening the the opening of the urethra and so the doctors um recommended circumcision for the boys and they went in when they were eight months old for circumcision and uh the first boy to go in for the circumcision was bruce and the um the equipment uh the equipment there was a a malfunction of the equipment and they were cauterizing the the penis in order to circumcise it and instead of just that small amount of tissue that was supposed to be cauterized apparently the the uh you know the settings were incorrect and the entire penis was burnt so bruce's penis was burnt um you know beyond any functionality So these poor parents went home. 
the other the other boy was not circumcised, just obviously. They went home, and what are they supposed to do? They have a boy without a penis. What the hell are they supposed to do? So months later, they were um, watching television, and John Money happened to be on there. And you have to know also that John Money was an extremely pompous, um, uh, self-assured individual. Uh, he was sophisticated. Uh, when he talked, you listened. Um, he came across as being definitive, being, you know, calling the shots, knowing, knowing what was going on, knowing the research, knowing the truth. And he, he in this interview on television, said that a boy can be raised as a girl and a girl can be raised as a boy if it's caught, if, if it's done early enough. And that um, early enough means be before the age of two and a half or three. Um, and, and the parents, the Reamer parents immediately uh, took note of that and they thought, Here, here's the answer. This, this is the answer for, for Bruce. This is what we're supposed to do. So they contacted uh, Dr. Money down in, uh, in Baltimore uh, and, they, and they made an appointment and took the twins down to Baltimore and went down there. Again, you have to understand that this was a uneducated, young, blue collar family. And when they were interviewed later about their meetings with John Money, um, they described him as like, we just thought he was God. Mm -hmm. We just thought, you know, this is, I mean, he's a professor and he's, you know, got all the diplomas and he's the head of this, uh, this, this entire clinic, clinic at, yeah. at, a, at an outstanding uh, university, one of the major universities uh, in, in the world. That was John at Johns Hopkins, Hopkins right? Yes, yeah, right. yes. So you have to imagine this young couple coming and they're at a loss and they are looking for an answer. They've been praying, they're looking for an answer to their prayers, what are we gonna do with Bruce? And John Money says, well, we have an answer for you because male and female is actually not related to chromosomes, it's not related to hormones, it's not innate. We can take little Bruce and we have to do some surgery on Bruce. We have to castrate him and we'll remove his testicles. He already didn't have a penis. We're gonna remove his testicles. We're gonna make, we're gonna fashion, you know, some sort of um, elementary sort of female genitalia. You're gonna give him a girl's name and you're gonna put him in pink dresses and give him dolls and raise him as a girl. And you are never, ever, Dr. Money told the parents, never to tell him that this was truly what happened in, in, you know, after he was born. Never tell him, because that will ruin everything. And it's up to you. You have to just work your hardest to raise him as a girl and make sure that everyone around him is, raising, is considering him a girl, because essentially he is a girl. And so not only was this the answer to the Reamers' prayers, this was, as you can understand now, the answer to Dr. Money's prayers. Right, right. He had okay. an experiment. This was the experiment. This was his proof of concept. His concept was that being male and female is completely separate from biology. It's imposed by society. It's a social construct. And this was his proof of concept. And so the Reamers went home. Well, he had his surgery. Uh, they took him home. They named, uh, they named Bruce Brenda. They put him in all the girls' clothing and they gave him dolls and they, you know, they did all the, all the things. And he peed sitting down sometimes. Because <laughs> as we'll learn later, he actually preferred 
urinating standing up, which is astonishing. Mm -hmm. We learned later that he always wanted to urinate standing up. Mm. And from the time he was in diapers, I think, he was told he was a girl. So that really is fascinating. But anyway, um, so they took him home, raised him as a girl, and uh, Dr. Money started to follow the twins every year. They would come down for a visit. Um, The parents would spend time speaking to Dr. Money. Dr. Money would take the twins without the parents into his office and spend time with the twins. So this went on for years. And Dr. Money began to report on his study that became a a famous landmark study. Um, And he called them... uh, uh, he called her Joan in his, in his study. He was beginning to write about this and lecture. And he was claiming that Joan, uh, a.k.a. Brenda, a.k.a. Bruce, was doing great. I mean, uh, she was adjusting. She was, she may be a bit of a tomboy. He, he, he would acknowledge that. But in every way, you know, she was adjusting and she was doing well with friends and with schools, and she liked playing with dolls, and she uh, would mimic her mom. And he was giving this glowing, glowing report from year to year, and in his, um, in his uh, you know, professional writing of his, his studies, his report, and he was giving talks, um, and he was getting, you might imagine, tremendous attention for this. I mean, you have to understand, this was by now maybe, uh, you know, the early 60s. This is feminism, okay? This is the sexual revolution. This is a time when society, um, or or at least part of society, wanted nothing more to say that male and female is a social construct. And that in order to gain, you know, full equality, women have to be considered the same as men. And, you know, to have a study such as this study of John Money's in which he was reporting that this baby who was X, you know, normal chromosomes, normal everything biologically, but is being successfully raised as a girl because he has a girl's name and girls and dresses and dolls and all, you know, his entire society his teachers and his grandparents and everyone is reinforcing the idea that he's a delicate uh, girl who, who, who likes to cook and, you know, is going to grow up to have babies. I mean, this was huge. Now, um, what happened is that this theory of John Money's um, became was accepted over over the decades. We didn't find out what really happened with the twins until decades later. Um, and in the meantime, in during those decades, his theory was became doctrine. Okay, his theory became just baked into um, you know so, so many fields of. Uh, both soft and hard science, so that it, it, it was standard that whenever you had, um, for example, a, a, an XY uh, or any any child that that had ambiguous genitalia, if they could be raised as a girl, they'd be raised as a girl, so they'd be castrated just automatically. Why? Because of the great success, because of what John Money um, proved to us, proved to us. And so lots and lots of boys all over the world. I mean, this was written into the, you know, the textbooks of endocrinology and the textbooks of uh, uh, genetics. I mean, this became truth, so to speak. Not that there weren't people, uh, you know, other other scientists that were standing up and and saying, 
John, you know, this isn't proven yet. You know, let's look a little closer. I don't, this is not necessarily the case. But what did he do? He wouldn't tolerate that. John Money, uh, you know, was a tyrant. He would not tolerate another uh, 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 psychologist or, or biologist or geneticist standing up and trying to publish something that would challenge uh, his great gender theory. He would, he, he, he would arrange, you know, he would intimidate the, um, uh, the editors at the scientific journals to not publish those articles. It's a lot of what's actually going on right now is very similar. Right. So, right. Um, right. so what happened with the twins is that uh, after decades, uh, in fact, John Money wrote a book in 1997 in which he said yet again that his twin study, um, uh, that, his, that his gender theory had been uh, confirmed and supported by the results of this experiment with the twins. And the following- One, one person experiment, by the way, a one person experiment. Yeah, but even that one person, it didn't work. So in 1998, um, uh, uh, what do we call him now? Not Brenda, not Bruce, but what happened is that we, 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 we discovered that he, he stood up and he said, he, he just blew the cover of this whole thing was a hoax. And he, his name was now David. Brenda had become David. And he was not only, not only a man, but he was married to a woman with, uh, and he had adopted three stepchildren. And he worked as a janitor in a slaughterhouse. Right. So that was David, David Reamer, and people can go onto YouTube and hear him being interviewed about his experience of what it was like to be told um, mm -hmm. for 14 years of his life that he's a girl and to never, ever, ever feel that that was, that that was his truth. To, and and um, what happened is that during all those years, he, he was not happy with his dresses and with his dolls. Uh, he was, he was, he wanted to go play with, with his brother's toys. He wanted to um, pee standing up. He wanted to, uh, you know, he was rough. He was, he, he, he was, he was so boyish that, and aggressive that um, kids called him uh, cave woman. Okay, they made fun of him because the way, mm. the way that he walked huh. and, the, huh. and his huh. gestures and his interests were all so masculine. And he was a miserable child and the, and the family was miserable. And on top of everything, when he was going back, when the family was going back for those yearly visits to Johns Hopkins with Dr. Money, Dr. Money was sexually abusing those twins. Okay, how? He was forcing them to undress and um, to, uh, to mimic sexual intercourse. And he would say, you know, this is how, uh, this is what men and women do together. And he would, you know, humiliate them and show them pictures. And the point came, why did they stop going down to mm. Johns Hopkins? The boys refused to go. They refused to go back to see Dr. Money and the parents couldn't understand why. What happened to David Reimer? What happened? Did, uh, did David Reimer committed suicide eventually, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yes, so that's, that's the denouement of that particularly tragic and, and his twin. So not only was this a failure. Oh no, it was a disaster, terrible disaster. He committed suicide and his twin brother died of an, of an opiate overdose before him. His twin right. died first. The entire family was you know, what, what are the, what kind of words? What, I mean, trauma, it's not enough. Trauma is not enough to describe what that family went through. My parents didn't know a lot that was going on. And if they would have known, that would never would have happened. By me not saying anything, uh, the medical community was under the impression that my case was a success story. And I was shocked when I heard that people thought 
that my case was a success story. So, so what we should point out here is that, that uh, this experiment couldn't possibly have gone more cataclysmically wrong than it did. Right, not only was what money was saying was not true in the technical scientific sense, it was an anti-truth and he falsified the data and it culminated in the death of two people, the demolition of a family and the perversion of an entire culture. That's and John Money's legacy. And, and he, never, he never publicly acknowledged it. John Money died, I think, in 2006, and I think he had dementia. But when the book came out, and uh, when John Colapinto's book came out that, that just, like, exposed this whole calamity, there was nothing from John Money. He was still alive. He could have made a statement. Nothing. I'm just saying that that's just another you know, indication of what the morality, the immorality of this person and the, you know, the, the, the lack of, of acknowledgement, you know, of, of, of what they're guilty of doing. I mean, you know, I guess it's too much to expect. The video that I مهم جدا مأخوذ من برنامج على قناة ديلي واير المتحدثة طبيبة معروفة يمكنكم أن تتأكدوا من ذلك من خلال الشبكة العنكبوتية طبيبة معروفة جدا والذي يجري البرنامج هو معروف بنحو أكثر منها الطبيبة هذه هي الدكتورة ميريام غروسمان والطبيب الذي يحاورها صاحب البرنامج وهو طبيب معروف كندي ومن الذين يكافحون ويواجهون هذا الضلال الجندري بقوة ولذا فهناك حرب شعواء تشن على هذا الرجل في بلاده الدكتور جوردان باترسون أعتقد أن التفاصيل كانت واضحة وواضحة جدا سأحدثكم عن مصير هذه العائلة وماذا جرى عليها ولكن قبل أن أحدثكم عن مصير هذه العائلة وماذا جرى عليها برنامج أوبرا البرنامج الأمريكي الشهير سنة 2000 ميلادي لقاء مع بروس وأمه مع الإعلامية الأمريكية الشهيرة أوبرا. For years, this case was called a medical triumph, but in truth, the case was a failure, devastating the lives of just about everybody involved. This is David, who has remained anonymous until now, uh, only known in the medical journals as John Joan. And this is Janet Reimer, David's mother, who made the agonizing decision to change the sex of her son and to raise him as a girl. And what you all at home didn't see during the taping of that piece, um, we could tell Janet you were, you know, moved and probably disturbed by uh, what you're saying. And David, you, you comfort her. Uh, she's hurting right now. Uh... Mothers are all over the world are all alike. There's guilt. Uh, 
it's darned if you do and darned if you don't. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what things that were done were done out of compassion, out of love for your child. Mm -hmm. and, and how can I hate my mother for that? Mm -hmm. Did you think he would hate you? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Did you hate yourself? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you talk on the tape about the day you first put the dress on. Did you have agonizing feelings about it even when the doctor, or were you of that generation or kind of person when the doctor said this would be best? Did you all believe that it would be best? Yes, I had complete faith in the doctor. Mm -hmm. I believed it would be best. But when he started to rip it off, I started to have doubts. Mm -hmm. And during the whole journey of trying to create a feminine being, there were doubts along the way, but I couldn't afford to contemplate them because I couldn't afford to be wrong. I couldn't have faced the alternative. And the alternative being what? That you'd made this horrible mistake? Yes. Because then what could you do? Right. Since, you, since your earliest memories, you never felt like you were a boy, a girl? I never quite fit in, uh, uh, well, the girls would do their things with their Barbies and things like that, and that wouldn't interest me. Mm -hmm. And uh, things such as trucks and uh, building forts and, uh, you know, getting to the odd fist fight and mm -hmm. climbing trees, that's the kind of stuff that I like, but it was unacceptable, so I'd never... As a girl? As, as a girl, I had no place to, to fit in. So what would you say to um, David, who was then your daughter, what would you say to him when he would act out his maleness? I would try and convince him that he was doing it because he was a tomboy mm -hmm. and that it was okay to be himself or herself, I would say at the time. It was okay to be herself, but she was very much a tomboy. Mm -hmm. I tried to fit in. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I tried with the, with the makeup and it, it, it Turned out to be a disaster. I mean, you got the, you know, the, the, the red, the red circles on the cheeks, and uh, look, I, look, I look like a clown, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, but I didn't do it because I liked it. I did it because I wanted so desperately to fit in because I was so lonely. And I let one boy kiss me on my cheek once, and I thought about it. I said, no, I don't like this. Uh, you know, that, that, I can't help that. You know, I am what I. Did I you am. feel you you when you say I am what I am, but you didn't know what that was? I, I wasn't sure. هذا اللقاء كان بالضبط بتاريخ اثنين تسعة ألفين ميلادي. أما الفيديو الذي كان طويلا بعض الشيء وعرضته عليكم قبل قليل. بتاريخ 18/4/2023 التواريخ مهمة جدا متى ولد بروس الذي صار بعد ذلك ديفيد والذي يتحدث بنفسه مع الإعلامية الأمريكية أوبرا ولد مع شقيقه التوأم بتأريخ 22-8-1965 ولادة ديفيد إذن هي هذه مع شقيقه براين اثنين وعشرين ثمانية الف وتسعمية وخمسة وستين وبعد ذلك تسلسلت الأحداث ودخل جون ماني على الخط وفعل جريمته وفعلته وأكذوبته الجندرية وبالأكاذيب أثبت صحة نظريته وإلى الآن 
نظرية جون ماني نظرية صحيحة كثيرون يدافعون عنها هناك من يرفضها ولكن هناك من يصر عليها والذين يصرون عليها هم الأقوياء في الأجواء العلمية أو في الأجواء السياسية وهذا هو الذي جرى على الناس ولا زال يجري إنها حكاية رجال الدين رجال الدين الأقوياء الأقوياء بأموالهم والأقوياء بدعم الحكومات لهم والأقوياء بكثرة الحمير من البشر حولهم يعبثون بالأديان كما يريدون ويحولون الأكاذيب إلى صدق هي هي الحكاية هنا هي هي لأن الرجل يريد أن يؤسس دينا إنه الدين الجندري وقد أسسه أسسه ومات وولى جون ماني ولكن نظريته الكاذبة تحولت إلى حقيقة علمية يعتقد بها كثيرون وكثير من الناس يعملون بها الآن كم من الرجال تحولوا إلى نساء وكم من النساء تحولوا إلى رجال وكم من الفتيان والأطفال الصغار نفذت فيهم هذه الألاعيب وجرت عليهم هذه الجرائم هذه نظرية جون ماني الجندرية قدوة من القدوات الجندرية ما الذي جرى على هذه العائلة لا أريد أن أكرر الكلام الذي سمعتموه في الفيديو الأول وفي الفيديو الثاني بشكل سريع الأب الأب ران ماذا جرى عليه بعد أن فعل جون ماني فعلته وجرى الذي جرى على ولده بروس أصيب بمرض نفسي دفعه إلى الإدمان وما بين الكآبة والحالة النفسية المزرية وبين الإدمان وما يراه في عائلته مات الرجل التوأم الثاني الشقيق بروس براين لما عرف بالحقيقة لأن التوأمين ما كانا يعرفان لما عرف بالحقيقة بعد أن أخبر الوالدان ولديهما بعد أن عرف الحقيقة وما جرى على أخيه بروس أصيب بمرض نفسي وكآبة حادة فأراد أن يتخلص من ذلك بالمخدرات فلجأ إلى المخدرات وأخذ جرعة زائدة من أدوية الكآبة وما أما ديفيد الذي هو بروس فبعد الذي جرى على أبيه وجرى على أخيه براين 
وما حدث من عبث في حياته تركته زوجته فانتحر ببندقية صيد وكان ذلك في صباح اليوم الرابع من شهر مايو سنة 2004 ميلادي زوجته أخبرته من أنها تريد الانفصال في 2 خمسة 2004 أربعة خمسة ألفين وأربعة انتحر ديفيد أما أمه حاولت الانتحار وما نجحت أصيبت بداء الذئبة وهو مرض معروف أسبابه نفسية وأصيبت بالسرطان أيضا وماتت وانتهت العائلة بالكامل هذه بركة من بركات الفلسفة الجندرية النظرية الجندرية لجون ماني جون ماني من متبنياته الفكرية يقول من أن ممارسة الجنس مع الأطفال ما هو بأمر سيء إلا إذا كانت الممارسة وحشية كان الكبار يغتصبون الأطفال أما إذا توفر الحب بين الكبار والأطفال والأطفال يحبون أن يمارس الكبار الجنس معهم فأين المشكلة؟ لا توجد مشكلة ألا تلاحظون أن الجميع يشربون من آنية واحدة يأكلون من طبق واحد إنها مائدة أبي مرة مائدة إبليس هؤلاء هم القدوات الجندرية الوقت ضيق الوقت ضيق والبرنامج محدود إذا كنت أريد أن أتتبع هذا الموضوع سأكون بحاجة إلى العديد من الحلقات إذا أردت أن أتتبع بقية التفاصيل هذه أمثلة واضحة من القدوات الجندرية قدوة نسائية سيمون وقدوة رجالية إنه جون ماني نذهب إلى فاصل